What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YougoProBaseball.com here with the man, Casey Smith. We played together in the Padres organization. A couple years ago we got together at the ABCA, made an awesome video, made a bunch of awesome videos. Uh, had like a little round table, did it again today. Bobby Tewksbury put it together. Uh, Casey, everybody, K25, North Aurora, uh, Illinois. Great stuff. Casey had an uh, awesome talk, talked about many different topics. That's what we're going to get into right now. Who, who else was in here? Uh, Chris Coach, Colabello. Coach Farber. Ferb. Joey Cooney with the farm system. So It was awesome. A lot of great stuff. Let's get into it. Awesome. Um, a real treat for anybody that's here that, because we got the metric stuff that's going on over there, right? So all, all the stuff that we did in that cage was like feedback on what the swing was actually doing, the movements he was doing, what it was creating. Um, I think one of the big issues you see with a lot of guys these days um, when it comes to making adjustments with different hitters is that they tend to skip through like the key part of building the trust with the hitter, right? So for example, if, if Chris's facility here, if I'm some guy off the street and I come in his facility and I just go, he's running a business and I say, like the first time I ever meet the guy, I go, hey man, I think you need like another cashier in the front and like um, you need to like, have your system over here has got to be different. He's going to be like, who the fuck are you, right? Like, why are you trying to make, tell me to make adjustments and things like that without knowing him? Now, if I ask the guy some questions and get to know him and he genuinely knows that I'm trying to help him, he's going to be much more open to making adjustments. This guy is one of the best at doing the communication stuff. So Casey, kick it off for these guys real quick. Yeah, so here. first off, the technology that's out there is available to us as coaches now is incredible. So um, I, I think, as a coach, I, I laugh about it all the time. I never got to see my own swing on video until I was done playing. You know, the, the availability we have and the tools that we have are incredible. Where I feel like there's a tremendous lack, um, and this is coaching all ages right now, is the ability to communicate. We have all the information. We have no idea how to talk to the players about it. Okay, and so one of the biggest things that I talk about is developing communication with your players and being able to do what's best for them instead of making them conform to you, you being able as a coach to be able to change to do what's best for them. If I have one way of doing it, that's it, and the hitter can't figure it out and I get frustrated with the hitter, it's not the hitter's fault, all right? Everybody thinks differently, everybody moves differently, all right? And so it's our job as a coach to have as many different ways as possible to go about getting a hitter better as we possibly can because you're going to have kids that are going to fail all right, if you only have one way of doing it, period. All right, you might have some guys have a lot of success and you might ruin other hitters. Okay, so you've got to be able to adapt. And so if I've got a new hitter, no joke, I just met this dude, okay? All right, sure you're a great guy. All right, but if I got a guy that comes in to hit with me for the first time, okay? Before we do anything, I'll start letting him get loose, okay? So he can start loose, you know, we're just bullshitting or whatever, letting him kind of go through his routine, try not to go oppo. All right, All right and what we're going to do all right, is I'm gonna have a conversation, okay? Before I talk about what his swing looks like, hey, here's what, what the data is, all right? We're gonna start to have a conversation. The first thing I like to ask guys is, what do you feel like you do well? What do you feel like you struggle with? All right, what are your big focal points, all right? I wanna know how they think, all right? Because what I found is, if you can understand how a hitter thinks about hitting, it will allow you to coach them better from a both mechanical standpoint and an approach standpoint. And what, what we run into is a lot of hitters have had things taught to them at young ages, okay? That are these internal like hardwired cues that they think are concrete truths about hitting. I was told this since I was six years old by my dad or my little league coach or my high school coach, and this is what I was told, and this is something that has to happen in a swing. And they don't even realize it. It's hardwired into their system. And because of that, it's something that's very difficult to break, right? So we have to be able to talk to them to see how they think about it. All right, thank you. Gotcha. And then we can start to build a plan. And so as he goes through his movements, right, I'm gonna ask him, so like, what are your big keys? Like, what's something you really like to focus on when you're doing your T-work? So I don't do T-work usually, but. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, hey, so that would be, hey, boom, kick yeah. the T out. All right, how do you like to start? You like to start front toss? Front toss, yeah, front, front toss. toss. Um, right now, I'm trying to basically revamp my swing. I'm super, 
super steep. Okay. So I try to stay in the air, no full side ground balls, no flares the left field. So I just want to hit line drives, 15 to 20 degrees up the middle. Okay. All right, cool. So he's going to go do his routine, all right, and especially with a pro hitter, all right, I'm going to allow him to go through what he wants to do. After he's taken 10, 15, 20, 30 hacks, we'll progress to front toss, maybe even do a little BP. I still haven't said anything, all right? All I'm doing is asking questions, all right? And I want to build kind of this profile in my mind about what he's trying to do, and then I'm going to put that together with what it looks like, all right? And what we're going to do is we're then going to come out, and I've got hit tracks in my place. We'll come out, and we'll start to look at video, okay? And as we're going through video, I start to ask him questions about what he sees in his own swing. All right, notice I still haven't done anything from my standpoint. I'm just asking. I'm trying to build a rapport to understand what he's doing. Then from there, I'm going to ask him, all right, what do you struggle with in the games? What do you feel like you, you don't do well when you're hitting a live game? Gets an inside pitch. I, like, I lunge a lot. Okay. Um, a lot of full side ground balls, like you kind of said. What do you feel like you do really well? Ball over the middle play, I feel like I can take up the middle backside really well. Okay. All right, and so after we go through that, now I know his strengths, his weaknesses, then I'm going to ask him, like, what do you feel like the number one thing that we need to address, that we need to work on? You just said what? You're steep. Okay? All right, and so then I'm going to go, and I'm going to show him the video and be like, well, this is why I think you're steep. Okay? And this is, from a coaching standpoint, one of the things I try to do the most is I want to find the root of the problems. All of us as coaches, we see the symptoms. We see a bad bat path, all right? We see bad direction. We see bad timing. We see bodies are out of control. Why? Okay, I can say, hey, you crash forward. Hey, your path is steep. But why is your path steep? All right, do you lose stretch? All right, do your hands fall forward? All right, do you have bad posture? All right, is your lower half in a bad position which then creating bad posture? I want to go back as far as possible and find the source. Okay, because if I'm treating the symptoms, but I'm not treating the problem, all right, they're fighting a losing battle. Okay, and I want to make it as simple as possible. Most problems in the swing are going to happen before the swing ever starts. Okay, so when I'm looking for the source, I want to go as far back through the process as possible. It's going to be somewhere in the load and in the initial move. All right, 90% of these problems are going to happen, all right, in the mechanics themselves before they ever fire. Casey, can I just, real quick, just because it, it, it came to my mind, well, if you guys will ever have this situation, this initial meeting with the guy where you're talking through things is so crucial. It doesn't seem that crucial, but something as simple as, hey man, you gotta stay back. This is a common thing that you hear. You gotta stay back. If what he says is staying back is keeping my back heel connected to the ground. That's what his version of staying back is. But here, when I say to him, stay back he's thinking oh i gotta keep my hands back or i gotta let the ball travel you, you, one's talking about a ball and staying back one guy's talking about an actual physical thing going on so this is real crucial just so you get the vocabulary and the, the, the communication is the same language yeah so that's when i go through that initial front like hands inside the ball is the one thing i hear all the time that every hitter thinks about it differently okay so if you like hey i think about staying inside the first thing i'll ask is what does that mean to you Okay, if you say, yeah, I need to make sure I stay back. Hey, I'm getting steep. I'm gonna ask, what does that mean to you? And then I'm gonna use his words with my information. So I'm not gonna tell him the way I think about it. I'm gonna tell him the way he thinks about it with my information so that I can communicate with him a lot faster. It's literally being a translator. Instead of him speaking Russian, me speaking Chinese, all right? And then us getting frustrated, all right? I'm gonna start speaking Chinese, but with the information I wanna give to him. Okay, and so then as we go through it, all right, now he's like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, like, because the information is more digestible, it's easier, all right? And, and one thing I think sometimes we forget as coaches is how hard hitting really is, all right, and how complex we make it when it doesn't have to be, okay? You use the best analogy I've ever seen, the race car driver, okay? If I'm a race car driver, or I'm driving around the track at 200 miles an hour, all right, I need to think about steering wheel, gas pedal, all right? That's about it, okay? Because I'm going 200 miles an hour. The pit crew knows oil pressure, fuel levels, tire pressures, all this stuff. It's their information to relay simple things. Hey, lay off the gas in turn three, okay? That's all he needs to think about, all right? I can have all of the data possible at my disposal, 
and then I'm going to filter it to him to give him very simple but very important cues that then he can immediately translate into a game. If I've got him thinking about all of those different things, while he's at the play, he's not going to hit. I've got to have one or two very simple thoughts all right, that then create all of the movements that we're looking for once they stand up there to face 95 and run. Like, even just when I was playing, and I don't know if y'all know, me and Madden, all right, we were teammates in minor leagues. By the way, his shit was nasty. All right, <laughs> down here, like 94, freaking nip, like this, okay? Did not like hitting off that guy, okay? So the pitchers that, like, like Chris said, the pitchers have outrun us as hitters. It's hard. It's really hard, okay? And if, if we have so many thoughts about what we're doing as a hitter from a movement standpoint, all right, you're not going to hit, all right? We've got to make sure that, that we focus on the approach, all right, the mechanics and the timing and the pitch selection and make it as simple as possible for him. How much do you want to be thinking about when you're up to the plate? Not nothing. Nothing. What, literally, okay? And so I've got to make sure that I have things that I do before the swing happens that are going to set my body up to do that, okay? And so the communication standpoint, if I'm going to get him to trust, like first said, my information as fast as possible, I've got to have two things. Number one, I've got to have the ability to communicate it. And then number two, I've got to have data to back it up. I've got to be able to show him, hey, when you do this, this is what's happening. He's like, but it doesn't feel like that. And then we immediately turn around and go, look. And the number one thing that, we, that I see with hitters that is a feel thing that's very hard to feel is one is posture. All right, every hitter that, that feels like they need more posture, they feel like they're like this, and they're really here. All right, so the video is able to show them the second. It's like where their barrel slots. They can feel like their barrel. And Josh, we talked about this year, all right, no joke was your bat. He would launch with his barrel from right there, all right? So we were trying to get it to here, and he had to feel like he was there. Literally had to feel like he was there. And he's like, bro, I feel like my barrel is laid straight back at the catcher, and it would be right there. Okay, that's where the video and the data piece come in and you put it all together is you allow the hitter to build trust with you. Okay, now this is, I go through the same conversation. So we're using a pro guy as an example. This is the conversation I have with a 12 year old. Okay, baseball and softball, it's the same conversation. Okay, because you need to get to know them because what they do is, it's funny, the younger ones come in, all right, and you coaches see this, is they go deer in headlights. You start asking them questions about what they're trying to do, and they're like, wait, what? I have to actually think of, you mean it's not being dictated to me on what I have to do. I actually have to take ownership of what I'm trying to do? Oh my God, all right? If we're gonna create hitters, they're gonna have long-term sustainable success. They have to be their own coaches. All we are is the information, all right? If you don't make the hitters take ownership of it to where they can apply it on their own, it's useless. Because now you become a wheelchair instead of an ankle brace. Okay, so my guys over here, I got three of my coaches that are with me. Glad they could come up. I've got three interns. Josh's been with me for a long time, trained him as a player. My three interns, okay? Now, this is gonna sound crazy. I still don't know why I did it, all right? But I got really, really lucky. I got three really, really, uh, really good dudes. I put out an internship application program on Instagram and hired three guys that I'd never met before, no idea where they were, where they were at. One was from Alabama, one's from Iowa, and one's from Tucson, okay? I put out this huge like questionnaire thing that they had to fill out about their hitting philosophy and all that, and I told them once they got hired, all right, and they didn't realize this, it's all bullshit, all right? I didn't care what their philosophy was, I didn't care you know, what their background was as a player, didn't matter. There's two things I was looking for is could they, could they articulate a thought on paper, and then how did they talk on the phone? Could they communicate a clear thought? All right, because if I could give them the right information, they were gonna be able to be great coaches because they could communicate, okay? And so that's the thing for me as a coach for other coaches that I'm trying to get guys to understand is how to communicate the information the best way. And what I see happens in the cages is there's, there's two things. And me and Josh just had this conversation the other day. Number one, because we have so much data and technology, we get really excited, all right? And we want to overcoach, all right? Every single swing, we want to give them some type of feedback, all right? When sometimes the best thing as a coach you can do is shut the hell up, all right? Literally, shut up, let them sit there, try to process something and go, all right, what do you feel? And, and let them tell you what they're doing and then go off of that instead of beating them to the punch to try to give them your information. 
allow them to try to process it. Let them fail a little bit, which is so hard, especially in a like in a one-on-one setting or in a, a small group setting. Like you want them to have immediate success. Well, that's that's not going to happen. And in this age, immediate feedback, immediate success is what they're expecting. So if you let them understand how to grind through it, how to take a little bit of ownership of the information, go outside the cage, feel it, think about it, come back in, that's how they're really gonna start to grow, okay? Now, high school coaches, college coaches, you have these same conversations. When you have your initial meetings, have, instead of, I'm gonna go out, okay, all right guys, we're doing this drill, then you're gonna rotate over this cage, you're gonna do this drill, then we're gonna do this drill, okay? Bring your guys in, have a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one meetings and talk to them and figure out what they've been taught. Who do they go to in the off season? All right, instead of butting heads, no, you can't hit with anybody. What does that guy teach? Let me get his number. Let me call him and see, what, this is what I'm trying to do because I have to win a ball game. And this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a movement pattern in a hitter. We're not enemies. We both want the same thing. That's important, guys. And I, I was gonna say is that you can clearly tell. I think one of the things that hitters are really attracted with, to Casey about how he teaches is because you can genuinely tell that he has the hitter's best interest in mind. I think that as coaches, we, we know what we want to do and we want to help, but we take out the fact that it matters. When we ask a player, why do you play, right? And we want this like eloquent answer about, well, I'm competitive and I'm driven and I want to do this and that. He, in his mind, it could be thinking, well, why are you coaching? Why do you want to, why do, you want to do this for me? Is it for money? Or are you just sitting on a bucket because you just don't do this, do that, do this, do that? And basically, you're just trying to get me to move a certain way. Or is your goal to keep me in my lineup? Because there's this big breakdown, like you guys, I'm so sure, have seen between the private sector of coaches, of guys swinging in cages, and the field coaches. Because they think that his mission is something different than what's going on in the game. So it's real important. If he knows that his only objective is to keep him in a lineup so that he has the opportunity to stay in a lineup, it's gonna be a much, he's gonna allow him to make the adjustments much easier than if he's just trying to prove a, a hitting philosophy. So and, and to build on that, my goal as a hitting coach is to be able to change somebody's life because they can hit a baseball or a softball. That's it, right? Now, change somebody's life is very different based on their talent level. All I wanna do is maximize your talent level, right? If you're a 12 year old kid and you're terrible at baseball, right? and I can help you as a hitter and you wind up making your high school team, that's life changing. That's an experience you would have never gotten if you hadn't gotten a little bit better, right? I'm not, I know I'm not gonna turn everybody into big leaguer. That, that's, that's not gonna happen. What I wanna do is give kids the ability to have confidence, all right, number one, all right? Because I don't care what we do and I'm gonna talk about some of the stuff from a mechanical standpoint in just a second where if you don't have confidence in a hitter, go play soccer, okay? Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have success have bad mechanics and be confident, you will hit, right? It will only get exposed at certain levels and then you can start to make adjustments. If you're not confident in what you're doing because your coach has been bashing you in the head telling you how much you suck and you can't make adjustments, you're not gonna hit, okay? And so as a coach, that's where the frustration in the communication side is like, hey man, you're not making that adjustment. Well, coach, I'm trying. Well, you gotta try harder. No, I gotta figure out a better way to tell you so it makes more sense or change how we're going about it. Look, this ain't working. And I, I'll readily admit, and, and like Cece said, I don't, I, I, the older I get, the less I realize I know. And the more I lean on all the players and coaches around me. I've, I've been really blessed to have a big network of a lot of guys, both players and coaches that know a tremendous amount about hitting. And so I don't know everything. I shoot out videos and go, hey, what do you got? Okay, because I want my hitters to have success. If I can't figure it out, it's, it doesn't mean that I'm not a good coach. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that the hitter can't figure it out. It means we gotta find other information. Okay, so going back to what I was saying though, when, when you have these conversations as a high school or college coach, 